The eighth command. You shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor. It means that we should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. The Eighth Commandment uh, has to do with how you talk about your neighbor. And the world has a simpler commandment for this. Let's be honest, they stole it from us too. It's judge not lest you be judged. Uh, and what they really mean by this is shut up and mind your own business, you're not perfect. Um, and it's true, you're not perfect, but at the same time, it neglects a really important fact. There is a difference between knowing a sin and judging it. To judge is not to know whether or not it's a sin. Judge is an action. It, it punishes or acquits. To judge is to declare somebody innocent or guilty of a sin. See, what somebody really insists on when they tell you, judge not lest you be judged, is a personal morality where everyone gets to determine for themselves if they're innocent or guilty. Like a judge. <laughs> That's their job. It's in the name. Right or wrong don't just disappear because somebody wants them to. You actually are allowed to study God's law, to know sin for what it is, and to recognize the danger within it. You're just not allowed to hand out punishment for it. That's actually what happens in the Eighth Commandment a lot of the time. It's uh, one of the reasons we are told to watch how we talk about our neighbor. Because one of the things that we do with the Eighth Commandment when we would uh, speak ill of them, to uh, betray them, slander them, or hurt their reputation, even if it is true, it's that we're actually trying to punish them with our words. See, even though Jesus says, I will be the one to forgive sins or punish, we say, nah, you're not doing it fast enough. I'm going to wreck their reputation and make sure that they hurt. Uh, I, I'm going to do something worse to them than even bodily harm. Because here's the thing. If you walked up to me in a small town and you stabbed me and you stole my wallet, it'd be bad. It'd be sin. It'd hurt. I wouldn't like it. But I could heal up and get a new wallet faster than if you ruined my reputation. God says your reputation is actually so valuable that it must be defended. Not simply by doing away with the idea of sin, but by not letting sins be stuck on you, but instead letting them be paid for by Jesus. The Eighth Commandment, it lets us uh, explain everything in the kindest well. It lets us speak well of our neighbor. To abuse the Eighth Commandment is to treat our neighbor the way that God would not treat them. Uh, to, to look at them as if they were not somebody worth loving. Look at them as if they were not somebody for whom Jesus had died. Uh, it works even though against the cross. By either trying to say, Jesus wasn't punished enough for their sins, so they need to suffer by how I talk about them, or Jesus didn't die for them at all. Neither of these are true. To work punishment by harming your neighbor's reputation is to work against your Lord's chief work of the cross. And to set yourself against the cross is a dangerous thing. To know people by their sins, it's a bad idea. Judge not. No sin. Know it to be wrong. Just also know that Jesus died for it and find peace there. Not just between you and God, but even between you and your neighbor. So that when you see their sin, then you recognize them to be so, you would always see Jesus bearing them on the cross. Did we do good? Is that, is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.